Well, good morning. Thanks for being here with me. There's uh, an old saying I, I think of from time to time, and I laugh at it uh, every time I do. It says that the bureaucracy is keeping up, uh, pardon me, the, demo- uh, the bureaucracy is expanding, the saying goes, to keep up with the needs of the expanding bureaucracy. And I've always had a bit of a laugh about that because anyone who has dealt with some of these systems realizes that almost every bureaucrat you'll ever meet is a good person, um, but very few of them have an eye on efficient outcomes. The process is the point more than the outcome. Really interesting story uh, out of New York that speaks a little bit to this. Even though we've reoriented so much of our society over the uh, last not quite year to be operating on a on an emergency footing a wartime footing as we we try to save lives and keep critical services going there are some uh some, some bureaucrats at least in the United States that are uh, carrying on a little bit uh as business as normal I want to bring on Shoshana Wiseman a senior manager of digital media and communications for the R Street Institute uh who had an interesting piece recently in uh, the Washington Examiner. Shoshana, good morning. Thanks for being here. I mean, we, we've we've had to f- change so much, to rejig so much to meet the threat of the pandemic. It almost brought me a sense of reassurance to know that there is at least one category of government worker in New York that is carrying on exactly as normal. So tell me a little bit about the vegetable counters. For sure. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so uh, a lot of people know about, like, the Cuomo chips where uh, a lot of bars to comply with new regulations from uh, New York were like uh, giving people chips with their food, because, with their uh, drinks, because they had to give them some food with their drinks. And um, regulators were deciding what counted and like cheese and crackers count, but chips didn't for whatever reason. Um, so to make sure that restaurants are giving sufficient amounts of food and they don't even define what that is in the regulation, they're doing sting operations. They're having health officials go undercover and make sure that they give enough food with beer. Um, and the problem was, a lot, you know, people want their beer. They, they want to sit down and have a beer and they don't always want the food with it. So there's a lot of food waste. Um, so, you know, good Samaritans, good restaurants are like, well, we're wasting food. So let's see if we can cut it down. But regulators couldn't have that. <laughs> There's a story my my father told me of uh, back back when he was young in Toronto had similar regulations that what would happen is that you would be given a sandwich with every with every beer, but it would just be the same sandwich over and over and over. And, you know, the sandwich that was put in front of you had probably put in front of 30 other people that day. It was just like a general issue sandwich. Here's your beer and here's your sandwich. These are regulations that are basically intended to prevent people from just going into a bar and knocking back a bunch of pints and then going home happy yeah exactly and you know i understand if they're worried about people mingling but i feel like there's ways for regulations to address that and and you know really address the health side of things without just harming people trying to do their business um a a lot of times regulations just don't work and this is what an example of regulations that are not working and, and harming things but um, they should be revisiting the regulations instead of punishing people. Um, it's all, it also might sound crazy to do sting operations uh, to make sure that they're giving sufficient food with beer, but you'd be surprised how often sting operations happen on the pettiest levels um, down to, um, you know, there's this one case a few years ago in Florida where there was a woman um, giving diet advice without an occupational license. She was a military spouse doing it legally in California, moved to Florida, and they did sting operations on her. Like some military spouse just trying to live her life is a higher priority than um, uh, uh, Florida recently had a really big problem of um, unlicensed, like, plastic surgeons. So you would think that they would be able to prioritize, but they just can't, even in a pandemic. And I think, you know, I, I guess the, the argument would be, and I'm I'm not trying to take the side of the wayward bureaucrat here, but, I mean, I guess the argument would be that, Unless your job is directly affected by the pandemic, I mean, if you are a member of the, uh, the the state government of New York, and if your job has not been in some way repurposed to be uh, forward facing on the pandemic, then it's business as usual, and you, you carry on doing whatever your normal job is. And there are people out there, of course, who have continued with normal work even amid this abnormal year. But on the other hand, it it just the optics of it are terrible because at a moment when so many people are are out of work or when so many people 
are desperately waiting for government services that are re- related to the pandemic. The fact that there's people wandering around doing sting operations on bars to make sure they're serving enough food per beer, it's just not a good look for anyone. And it's not that anyone had ill intentions here. It's just that sometimes these bureaucracies become so big, they almost can't help but produce really absurd outcomes. No, um, you know, it's funny. This reminds me of a line from SpongeBob. I don't often quote SpongeBob, but there's this great scene where uh, SpongeBob and Patrick are are protecting an egg, and his name is Roger. And uh, Roger goes flying up into the air, and so does a light bulb. And SpongeBob yells out, um, the light bulb, without it, Roger will die. And Patrick yells out, Roger, without it, the light bulb will have nothing to warm. Um, And Patrick's attitude there is what you see with a lot of bureaucracies, the, you know, the the self it exists for its own sake. Um, and New York in particular has had a lot of trouble with this. Um, and it's not because it's a, a blue state or because of partisanship. Just certain states struggle with this more. Um, in the early pandemic, when we weren't sure if it was like safe to go outside, um, they were still giving parking tickets to people who left their cars outside so that, you know, they could stay inside and, and do what government was telling them to do. Um, And it's that self-perpetuating, like, wait, why are we doing this again? Um, The the failing to question, um, the failing to have measures in place to say maybe we stop doing this one thing right now. um, Or maybe, like, health officials should be looking for, like, unsafe practices or, you know, um, bars and restaurants not following uh, more important real health or safety regulations. But you're right. It's just business as usual, and it's just the self-perpetuating bureaucracy um, I'm also glad you mentioned that, you know, a lot of individual regulators and um, bureaucrats aren't bad people. It's just it's easy to get caught up in whatever system you're in. Um, and unfortunately, government um, officials and, and the, the large bureaucracy itself or even the legislature doesn't often enough take a look to make sure that that the, the mass is working. Well, I was saying to a friend of mine recently, uh, Shoshana, and I think you'll you'll know what I mean by this, but there's been a lot of conspiracy theories of late floating around, and all of the conspiracy theories posit that the government is actually being run by a very small group of bad people who are hyper-competent, and anyone who's actually spent any time around government knows that, that it's actually the opposite of all those. It's a huge group of really good people who have great intentions but are largely incompetent. And the conspiracy theory just completely inverts the natural order of things. I don't think anyone at the New York State State House thought it would be a good idea in the middle of a public health emergency to have guys going around to bars running sting operations to count vegetables. But when when it's all said and done and when the ideas at the top get translated into action at the bottom, you end up with stories like this. Exactly. And in my work, I see this a lot, just real unintended consequences of regulations, whether by the hand of bureaucrats directly or just things that the regulations produce in, in ways that, that people couldn't imagine. But um, the problem is that they're, that we don't revisit regulations. They're kind of up and they, they just force things to, to go slow, to not work right. Um, and I'm, I'm a big person for like you know, making sure that regulations are working as intended, because if they have a real purpose, we want to make sure they're doing that and not just kind of annoying people. Um, but you're also totally right that it's like, it's a, those conspiracy theories always amuse me because I'm like, guys, no one would be able to pull this off. And at the very least, no one can keep their mouth shut in government. Everyone wants to talk about how important they are. So that would get around pretty quick um, if there was some like massive conspiracy uh, at, at that level. Um, it's it's frustrating too, because, you know, faith in government is down and we should always be questioning, but it's it's just not serving to help people as much these days. I'm not sure if, if that's a conceit of the present where I think it's a little worse now than it used to be. But um, but with regulations like this, big and small, it's really important to make sure that they're they're doing the thing they're supposed to be doing. I'm sure Cuomo intended these regulations to make sure that people weren't mingling at bars and stuff. But instead, they're just kind of hassling businesses who are, are putting in safe practices and trying to save food um, instead of wasting it. Um, it's not a good idea. Um, and and I, I wish that there was a bit more regula- regulatory humility, a bit more ability to recognize that if something doesn't work, you should change it instead of, you know, go with it harder because people don't like it and they must like it because it's yours. And one last point, Shoshana, and it's, it's worth mentioning here, <clears throat> excuse me, because of we, we've talked a little bit about, you know, the businesses here and, and, and how they're they're doing their best. They're trying to be safe. 
Is it worth mentioning, just underlining just for a moment here to the listener, that these hospitality sector businesses are the ones that have probably been struggling the most in this pandemic? And I think that sort of adds to the absurdity of it. Like, if there's one group of businesses right now I would not feel like I should be hassling with needless red tape and bureaucracy, it would probably be the poor bar and restaurant owners. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I forget the stats, but it's really, really high how many of them have been harmed. You know, on an anecdotal level, a lot of my favorite restaurants, when I go to their websites to, you know, to see how they're operating, they're, they're in danger of closing. They're not doing great. The, these, this industry has been hurt really hard. Um, and they've also not received a lot of help, a lot of understanding. Um, it, it's gotten better over time, but they're struggling really hard. They're doing their best to make it work to make sure that they don't have to fire employees who oftentimes are like family to them. They don't want to have to lay them off. Um, it, it's it's really it, it's heartbreaking to see the way it's gone. Um, uh, you know, there's parts of New York City where there's just you know restaurants have closed down all over, and it's sad. These these are people who put their their heart into their work, and it's it's gone. Um, no, I, I totally agree with you there. Um, and I just wish that regulations were a little kinder to them. Not to say that, you know, I mean, we need those health and safety measures and we need different ones during a pandemic. But like, we shouldn't be going around saying, oh, you gave insufficient amount of bowls of vegetables with your beer. We're going to fine you $1,500 because you haven't been hurt enough. Absolutely. So, Shanna, thanks so much for this a really interesting article. And, you know, it was about New York State, but there's examples of it all across North America right now. You, you can you can change your jurisdiction, but find a story that's just like it. So we appreciate you coming on this morning. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. Shoshana Wiseman joining me here, Senior Manager, Digital Media and Communications at the R Street Institute, my guest on the show.